All right, one down, 49 to go. In February 2018, I decided to go on a tour. A 50 state tour where I would visit one guitar store in every state of the United States. I figured why not do something nobody has ever done before and go to every state in the country and film a video in a guitar store. Guess what? The guitar store tour is officially completed. I have one more video to come out from the final state of the tour, which is Guitar Czar in Utah. Stay tuned for that one. And if you're unfamiliar with this project, what I did was create an individual video for each guitar store for each state. There's a link in the description to the Guitar Store Tour playlist so you can find your state, see which guitar store I went to, what kind of video I made. But for today's video, we have something very unique. I'm featuring as many great stories from guitar store owners and employees. I had one simple question for each of these people. I asked them all the same thing. What's the weirdest thing you've seen in this guitar store? Can't even tease this video with the different stories because it's so wide ranging and I know a lot of you are gonna be able to relate to these and get a kick out of them. Thanks so much for your support and helping me in your viewership to complete this project and stay tuned for a couple more guitar store videos to come soon. For now, please enjoy. The craziest guitar store stories you'll ever hear. Guy stuffed a $4,000 EVH guitar down his pants and walked out while we all waved to him. I guess a gal fell off her Segway last week. That was right the highlight of the week. Right, right there. She was cruising pretty fast. We were getting ready to load up uh, some gear for a show. We accidentally set off the alarm and the uh, police came with their uh, guns drawn and uh, we tried to explain that it was actually our <laughs> stuff, but... Uh. It was a Martin D28, which is a fairly expensive guitar being, oh, yeah. being set on fire. It was a scorned lover, oh, and a little bit of hair gel and a, and a match, and boom. A large group of people came in, about 12 people, and the, most of them just stayed around over here. One guy walked in the back and pulled a guitar off with the hanger. Whoa. Just like this, and walked over to an amp proceeded to play it, and I had to go over and pull the wall hanger off for him. So I think this is a normal thing for him. Uh, I got a killer deal off a guy once. He brought in a uh, 1961 Gibson SG. First year, said Les Paul Special on it still. All beat up. And I asked him uh, what he wanted for it, and he said 400 bucks on an Xbox. And I did not hesitate, and I said, sure thing. I'd say probably the guy that told us that he was John Lennon's dad, and Paul McCartney's dad, and George's dad, but not Ringo's. Oh. He was not a Ringo fan. A more elderly homeless lady came in in a one-piece bathing suit asking to use her bathroom. And uh, we, we obliged, because that's what you do in Texas, you, you oblige. Okay. Um, and she was in there for about 20 minutes, and. She came out and she was covered in soap and water. I didn't feel clean in that bathroom for three weeks afterwards. <laughs> a while back, a customer brought in a guitar and he couldn't plug the cable into the output jack. So after messing around with it for a little while, I grabbed some uh, dental picks and started sticking them in there. And then I started pulling out this green substance, which later turned out to be marijuana. <laughs> we had a lady came in here and I didn't know who she was. And uh, she's coming in here and she just started dancing and stuff and just twerking all over. Wasn't even no music playing or anything like that. And, uh, and she left and she probably came back about three times that whole day. And every time she'd come back, she'd just come in, just start twerking on the showcases. We asked her to leave about four or five times and she finally got up that last, uh, last time. Never came back, but we called her the twerk girl. We had a guy uh, uh, bring in a bunch of stolen guitars from the Guitar Center that he had stolen by poking the neck down his britches. Six cops came running in here and you know that was kind of weird. Probably the craziest thing that's happened in here. Uh, we have a customer who comes in here pretty regularly. I don't know that he's ever bought anything. He was slurring his words a little bit and he asked us if we could uh, repair a telly for him. You know, of course we have a repair shop here so he said of course. He left and about a half hour later, I'm not kidding you, he came back with a 32 inch TV. The cord was pulled out of it and he thought that we could repair it. 
Totally. I get it. A particular rock star came in and we built him a guitar. Mm -hmm. And he liked it, but he said, oh, I want the body to be bigger. And I want the depth of the guitar to be bigger. And I want a secret compartment put in the back of the guitar so I can house something very special. I want to put a Derringer pistol inside the secret compartment. And I want to wow. be able to have a magnetic push-push so it can pop open in case I need to shoot somebody. I remember it was a busy Saturday, a gentleman had come in, he picked up this late 70s Telecaster that was really cool, and a bunch of people had been playing it. While he was playing it, the guy, another guy came up to the front and said, you know what, I'm going to take it, I, I really want it. So I had the very uncomfortable and awkward moment duty of going back over to the fella and saying, I'm so sorry, this is sold, and he's here, so I have to take the guitar away from you. So he got a little offended, he was like, okay, yeah, okay, that's fine. He went back into the amp room, and literally that... He was in the amp room playing an amp. A guy came up who was in the store and saying, actually, I want to buy that amp. So I had to go back there again within half an hour and say, I'm sorry, this amp is sold. <laughs> so I turned it off and I, <laughs> and I took it away. We had one customer once who I thought was pretty funny. He kept grabbing guitars off the rack and handing them to me, one after the other, just saying, play this one. I play one, I play a G chord. And he'd snatch it back mm -hmm. and then grab another one and be like, play this one. <laughs> and then he finally settled on one he liked. And he, he had me play it for like 10 minutes. I'm like really going, like, keep playing, keep playing. And I kept playing it and then he was like, all right, I'm gonna go get a haircut and I'm gonna come buy that guitar. And he runs out and he has like really long hair and he comes back with like a crew cut. And then what? just uh, buys his guitar and after I check him out, he's at the counter and he's like, and always remember, Jesus, man. This guy came in with a bright orange wig and a baseball cap. Conspicuous. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, very nonchalant. Stole one of our most expensive trumpets off the wall. So he's a trumpet thief. He's a trumpet thief. It was a heist. There's three of them. And anyway, the very next day, uh, he tried to sell it to one of our sister stores in uh, in Norman. Yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty dumb. That just goes to show trumpet crime doesn't pay. That's right. We had a customer, or not a customer, I guess it was more like a thief that came in uh, the front door proceeded to go back here where the electric guitars are, yep. grab two, it might have actually tried to grab three, and then just run right out the front door. One of my sales guys, Drew, uh, jumped over the countertop, chased him around the building, all the way down to the neighborhood behind us, tackled him, pounded him a few times, <laughs> and while he was doing that, a police officer, which is in the gym next to us, saw what was going on, and he came down and helped. Don't steal from Accent Music. <laughs> yeah. We had a customer that bought a Shell Pink ESP from us years ago when they were extremely popular. Mm -hmm. And it was such a neat guitar, we always remembered that he had bought it. So one day he came in and said, boy, somebody stole my Shell Pink guitar. And we said, you gotta be kidding me. Oh. So he was looking around for a new guitar. He walked outside to have a cigarette. Some young kid came walking in. Hey, I just got this guitar from a buddy of mine. So we locked the door, knocked on the window, let him in got his guitar back, so that was pretty nuts. So the craziest thing is uh, definitely not guitar related. Guitar people tend to be really cool. Um, car people or just tourists, on the other hand, not so much. Yeah. Um, we have a policy where we don't typically allow people to lean against, uh, you know. So this is illegal, that what you just did what there? What I just did is illegal. Good thing I'm the owner. <laughs> okay. Um, but it's uh, a policy of ours not to allow people to lean or, you know, lay on multi-million dollar cars, very rare cars such as this 58 Testarossa here. But one day we had a woman, you know, leaning against, taking her pictures, and doing everything that she does. And we said, you know, very nicely, you know, excuse me, ma'am, you know, please, uh, you know, please don't touch the cars. And she goes, I'm not hurting it. And we're like, but ma'am, please, it's a very expensive car. And she went, oh, and reached in and pulled her leftovers or takeaway from a restaurant oh and my. walked with her disgusting, greasy, <laughs> paper bag that was sitting on the seat of this multi-million dollar Ferrari. The only thing they had with them was a bag and an axe. So they, an they axe, yeah, not a and, no, not a guitar. No, 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 yeah, <laughs> different kind of axe. The scary one. The one that yeah, people exactly. Okay. So he used that tool to break through that wall into the, there's a hair salon, got through there Whoa. and broke down that wall over there. Okay. And uh, the only thing he got was like, four Epiphone guitars. We had one guy that he bought a Santana 10 top. Yeah. So it was like 4,000 roughly, right? He says, can I run it on two, two different charges? And I'm in my brain, I'm thinking, well, you know, he must be maxed out on one, but it's got, you know, a better rate or, you know, better points, you know, yeah. fly miles or something. So he gives me his card and we run it through for $800. Uh, 
And then I'm expecting he's going to give me a different card. He says, no, run the rest on the same card. I'm like, oh. He, I think he's just going to show his wife the $800 receipt. Oh. Uh, I Three. right over my head. Me too. I mean, I don't think that way. So I mean, three years later, I get this phone call from the guy. I need to sell this guitar. And I knew right away he was busted. So this space is... Uh, part showroom and also part event space. So about 215 people show up and that many people do not fit in the space at all. The drinking did become an issue and uh, I was actually on stage. I heard off stage like a, a scuffle. I later on find out that my older brother who came to attend the show uh, got punched in the face in a contentious bathroom line. <laughs> well, I, I knew Hendrix when I was younger. I knew Jeff Beck. Uh, all those guys I used to hang out with when I was younger. Jeff Beck, basically, I hung out with him uh, when he first came to the States with the Jeff Beck band with Rod Stewart. Okay. So you hung out with him for a couple of years, and um, Hendrix was always hanging around with us, too, so it was kind of cool. A winter day, just starting to snow outside. I opened up the store, had about a few customers waiting at the door for me, and as I'm helping out two or three people, one fella takes a... Um, Fender Telecaster out of the uh, display case, which was unlocked, and he was trying it out, and which was okay. And uh, later on, we discovered the guitar was missing, mm -hmm. and with the surveillance cameras, uh, we saw him putting it uh, at a uh, location of the store under his winter coat, just the neck hanging out. As he left, some of the people waved bye to him. You know, it was like F Troop. <laughs> I had this one guy walk in. It was uh, towards the end of the shift, and he actually. Um, I ended up selling him um, one of our mango tenors. It was funny though because he was actually, he was just walking around like trying all the different ones while I was, you know, helping another customer. Mm -hmm. And he was like helping me sell almost. Um, he was just encouraging, oh, I could, I could choose for you because they were having <laughs> a hard time picking which one they wanted. Several years ago we had a seagull nesting up on our roof and we thought the right thing to do was to leave it alone until the babies were big enough to be on their own. Mother became very protective and decided to uh, swoop and attempt to intim intimidate any of our customers that were coming through our front door. And this went on for uh, a good several weeks until that baby finally was big enough to be on their own. Mick Mars and Earl Slick were here. Earl was in one room and Mick was in another room on totally opposite sides of the store. And they left the doors open for, for the rooms cranked up both of their amps and they both started playing different things but you could hear they started like taunting each other and then they started playing songs from each other's bands and then they started playing together. We had a, a little lady wandering across the parking lot with a guitar just holding it like this. She uh, came into the store and she was looking for a value on the guitar because she needed to pay some hospital bills and so they had called ahead of time and you're thinking you know it's going to be that uh, kind of that import uh, guitar, maybe a Tysco at the best, but it just happened to be a 53 Telecaster that was dead mint. And uh, so she, she wanted to get some money for it and I made her an offer, but I didn't feel like it was fair. So we actually brokered the guitar for her. So she went from uh, being $5,000 in debt in her hospital bill to having money left over. Wow. We see plenty of weird things, but interesting, one of the more heartwarming things was uh, we work with the Make-A-Wish folks and we had a young gentleman that wanted a really nice Martin guitar. So we were able to get this really stellar Martin guitar. And uh, Grace Potter was doing Grand Point North, which she does every year here in town. And uh, she ended up coming in along with 50, 60 friends and family. And we hid them up in the acoustic room and the gentleman came in to get strings and he was ushered up that way and there was Grace Potter handing him this beautiful Martin guitar and actually ended up uh, they played a tune together and it was it was really awesome. One time our lock broke on our front door and we had to call the local locksmith. Turns out he walked in and he looked up at the wall and he's like oh you carried my dad's strings. Um, who's your dad? Apparently that's Diodario so you just never really know Who's gonna walk in the front door? Diodario's <laughs> son fixes locks. We have a slide, which you saw, obviously. Um, and someone called me and I was running the Instagram account at the time. And they were like, hey, you've gotta go out to the slide and check it out. There's a bunch of nuns hanging out uh, at the music store and then they're also going down the slide. And I'm like, what? 
I walked down there and I got my phone ready and seriously like 50 nuns hanging out and they're having a ball. Many years ago, I had these two guys here from England and they wanted to buy a uh, SG for me, mm -hmm. a Gibson SG. And I was dealing with them and there was this one guy walking around with his pea coat on with his hair all spiked up and I, so I called my brother out to go sell. I said, I, I got like a homeless guy walking around in the store. I said, it looks very suspicious. I'm trying to deal with these two guys that want to buy two guitars. I said, but you know, can you keep an eye on this guy because he's walking around the store. So, so I started talking to these guys were talking and after a while I said, oh, so you guys are in town? He goes, yeah, we're playing at the Paradise. I said, oh, great. He said, uh, you know, who are you with? He goes, oh, I'm with John Paul Jones. I go, oh, great, John Paul Jones from Led Zeppelin? He goes, yeah. I go, man, what, what's he doing now? He goes, oh, he's right there. So the guy that I had watching, who I thought was a homeless person, <laughs> turned to be John Paul Jones. And I went, what? The one that really takes the cake, we had a fellow come in a couple of years ago, a challenged individual. He was trying to raise money for his addiction of some kind. Uh -huh. And he'd called several times on the phone that day, and I'd... I'd spoken with him and some of the other guys had too, and we told him we weren't interested in what he was selling. Ah, I see. But he showed up with the items, and um, when I told him I wasn't interested in buying them, mm -hmm. I said, you know, we discussed it on the telephone. He said, man, if you don't buy them, I'm going to break them. I'm just going to break them. And I said, you can do whatever you want with them, but you can't do it in here. And he proceeded to lose his mind and write here sort of in the general vicinity of your camera, he destroyed some sort of imported SG guitar. Just beat it to pieces and I was Whoa. able to shoo him out the door and then he beat a couple other things on the light pole out there into small pieces and went over across the street and passed out. A guy came in with a Les Paul to sell me, an old 70s Les Paul, and it was like missing, it had two strings on it, and it was missing tuners on the top and everything. Just walked in with it with no case, and he said he pulled it out of his basement, it was all dirty and everything. And I said, well, that's a cool guitar, I can fix it and make some money. So I said, uh, how much you want for it? And he's like, a hundred bucks. I was like, yeah, yeah, a hundred bucks, I can do that, no problem. So I gave him the hundred bucks, I was like, oh, this is great, I'll put it in the back, I'll fix that up someday, you know? Uh, maybe like an hour later, Thurston Moore from Sonic Youth comes into the shop and um, he goes, did you just buy a Les Paul by any chance? And uh, honestly, I didn't even think. I just said no, because there's no way it could have been the guitar. I figured they would want, you know, they'd be playing. And I said to myself, oh yes, I did. It's missing tuners and has two strings on it. He's like, oh yeah, we, that's, that's how we use it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was his guitar that they were using that night. And the guy had reached into his station wagon he was driving that night and pulled it out the window and no one was looking. <laughs> oh. Walked around the corner because the club was around the corner and sold it to me. So uh, we had a sales event one time and Paul Reed Smith, the man himself, was here. And uh, I got distracted and was talking to a customer. And at the time we had a 1959 uh, original Fender Strat that had uh, all its original hang tags and really never been out of its case or anything, totally mint, and it was hanging in a glass case uh, about five feet away from where I was standing. And uh, next thing you know, I lost sight of Paul, and I turned around, and the guitar was missing from the showcase. Uh, <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden my heart mm -hmm. sank, and I was a little bit nervous, and uh, I walked back to the repair shop, and I found Paul Reed Smith on our shop bench uh, taking apart this all original 1959 Fender Strat. And he said, well, I can't talk to Leo Fender, but I can talk to this guitar and it can talk to me as he was peeling off the pick guard of this original 1959 Fender Strat. When I started this business, I started out in my garage and uh, selling just small guitars. And my wife said, what are you gonna do with the money? And I said, well, I'm retired, so I'm gonna give it to charity. And uh, at that time, we rescued a dog named Rusty up in um, Manhattan, New York, who was dropped off to, after 14 years, and people didn't oh. want him anymore. So we flew up and we got him and brought so him back. So that's why the dog is the uh, the logo. Exactly. This shop and everything we do is in is in his honor and memory because uh, he lived a full life and he didn't want to quit. He just kept going. So we donate everything here to charity. It goes to Guitars for Vets. Animal Rescue and Children's Education Initiative here in Charleston at the Gale Yard Center.